Listen, let's fix some candle mistakes here. Welcome to a new candle tips video. My name is Jose. I am a Jolang in candle. And today I'm gonna to be talking about some candle mistakes, specifically with the swing and some possible fixes. I'm gonna be talking mainly, I'm gonna be talking about three mistakes specifically. Just before I keep going with this video, I'm gonna say that please, if you enjoy this channel, if you enjoyed these videos, consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the like button on the videos. Share them with everybody that may like the videos. That will really help grow my channel. And if you may have noticed, I have a little bit of a different setup. Uh, hopefully I can come up with a lot of new videos, new ideas to you know share with you. And I'm also doing streamings on Sundays at 3.30 p.m. So welcome to join. And normally what I do is I do some Mitori Geiko, I bring up different topics, we talk about Kendo, we have fun, we talk together. So please, if you would like, you can join me at 3.30 p.m. on Sundays. And yeah, if you haven't, please remember to subscribe to the channel. So as you know, we're in a year where we're doing a lot of Subudi, so I've been watching a lot of videos, I've been taking a lot of videos of myself, watching my Subudi. So I've been able to pick up some common mistakes that I see a lot of people doing, and so I wanted to share that because maybe you're doing them or maybe you know someone that's maybe doing this thing so I hope that's helpful. Uh, I'm gonna talk about three mistakes, maybe a bonus one too. The first one I'm gonna talk about it's not engaging your wrists. But what happens with this one is that when you swing, the wrists don't engage on the way up, it, they're kind of too loose. What that does is that the tip kind of goes after the suka of the sword. So instead of the sword kind of going up in this motion, it kind of goes up a little bit in this motion. So the main problem with this is that you can be susceptible to injury. We want to avoid injuries at all costs, especially if you're doing this at the end of the swing, which I've seen a lot when people are trying to hit hard or we're trying to hit with power. The other problem this has is that the way the shinai is going up, it's a little bit weird. The tip is not the first thing to go up. It's kind of like the, the, the back of the shinai starts going up first instead of the tip. And well, that's just gonna make your candle very ineffective. So in order to fix this, the best thing you can do is just have proper grip. If you haven't, you can watch my video on Kamai right here or in the grip. That'll help a lot. But mainly what you wanna make sure is that your wrists are on top of the shinai instead of on the side, because once on their side, they disengage and they cannot transfer the power effectively into the shinai. That's one thing. The other one is the proper push and pull of the shinai. You want to make sure that you have these two fingers firm on the shinai, you're pushing to bring the sword up and you're pulling to bring the sword down and you end up on a firm position. You're gonna relax right after the hit, but you want to make sure that you end up in a firm position rather than overextending your wrist. If you notice, a lot of this happens because of lack of proper grip. If I grab it correctly, that fixes that problem most of the times. If you have any questions, if you feel like you're not getting it right, please let me know in the comments. You can also contact me through Instagram and send me like a little video. I will tell you what I think about it. But yeah, so let's move on to the next one. The next one, it's I think even more common. This one is about raising your shinai with your right arm. So what's happening here is that the shinai is being lifted by pulling towards your body. What you want to do is you want to make sure that the right arm follows the path of the shinai and it doesn't pull it towards you, okay? Unless you're doing stuff like katsugi waza maybe, uh, but that even that's even, you want to also engage your left hand. So please, let's fix our swings first. Ideally, what you want to do again is that you want to push with your left hand and then you want to pull down with your left hand. The right arm should follow the path of the shinai and you shouldn't be pulling the shinai towards you as it goes up. Another thing that happens is as the shinai is up, the kind of like the tip dips down because the right arm is disengaged. What that's going to do is that when you go swing your sword, it's gonna come at a different angle and you're not gonna be able to transfer the energy effectively. So maybe you're gonna get a harder hit 
downwards instead of forward. You want to hit forward. It's a combination of a lot of bad things that could go wrong if you don't have a proper swing up and down. In order to avoid this, it's just to make sure that you teach your body, do it slow, go up and down slow in the proper motion. Try to look at yourself in the mirror and understand that you're going up and down with your shinai with your left hand and practice this. Standing your arms away from your body and swinging, doing small cuts without moving your right arm. Especially when you go kotemen, kotemen several times. Try that without pulling with your right arm and that may help you understand how the shoulders are the ones lifting your shinai and not necessarily the bicep. I know I'm being a little bit broad with all this because a lot of the things that may be happening can be different. So if I, if I identify some of those stuff, I'll share them with you. But if you have any questions about these, if you're having any of these problems that you really can't figure out to fix them, of course, ask your sensei first. I think that, that should be the first thing. But if you want to like, just like a different thought, a different opinion, you can send me a video, you can let me know, and I can try to s see what's going on and see if I can come up with a specific solution. Cause I'm being, I know I'm being abroad with this. Last one. And I think it, this one, it's very common. I think all of them are kind of common, but okay. Last one, it's opening up your elbow. So I've seen a lot of people, I've seen a lot of videos when they raise up the arms, they open up the elbows on the way up. Again, main thing this does is that it stops you from transferring the energy on the cut effectively. In order to make sure that you don't do this, please watch yourself, record yourself, do them slow, do big swings, okay? One thing that I like to do to practice this is make sure that I do swings all the way to my ears. And also this helps with avoiding using your right arm pulling to yourself, okay? But make sure that you do them slow, go all the way up, understand the motion. And as you go up, make sure that your arms are in a natural way up, that they follow the line of the shinai and you're driving up and down with your arm. It's kind of like your arm is transferring the energy to bring the shinai up instead of just using kind of like a pulley action or lever action with the shinai. You do want to have a little bit of that action, yes, but it's a combination. You also want to use your body instead of just one little piece of the puzzle. So drive up and drive down Follow the lab of the shinai with your elbows. Remember the shinai, it's an extension of your arms. So if you do this, you're kind of cutting the line of power to the shinai. So please make sure you follow your shinai with your arms and you give support to your shinai on the way up and way down. You're gonna get a sharper strike. You're gonna get a more control cut. And I think your kendo will improve by understanding the dynamics and how to transfer the energy from your shinai and your opponent because you're gonna get a better impact. So you're not gonna overcompensate by trying to like put power with the right arm and all the other bad habits that we want to avoid. One thing that is kind of like, I guess my bonus mistake, it's that I, I, I've i seen happen that people kind of like, when I say whip the shinai, they pull downwards towards their face as the shinai is kind of going away. And then they push with the right arm to, to extend the shinai. So you end up in a little bit of a elbow, like uh, not extended arm. And on top of that, your cut is gonna be downwards. Again, do this motion slow. I know you probably want to be fast, but trust me, if you learn, if you teach your muscles the proper way, you get them tired and you, of course, watch out with your injuries, but, but you get them to know the proper motions correctly, you're going to be able to do a faster and sharper hit. A lot of speed in kendo comes from knowledge of proper technique rather than physical ability. Physical ability does help, but make sure that you extend your arms at the end of the cut and then relax. Don't relax by just opening up your elbows, but the tension that's on your arm at the end of the strike, you know, let, let go of that tension. Also, when you practice your swings, when you're doing subudi, Try doing slower counts between one cut to the next, but every cut, try to put a lot of good intensity and intention and trying to have a nice cut on each of them. 
I recommend you to do two practices. And those are things that I'm actually doing myself is take some time to study the motions, do them slow, maybe don't even put in the footwork yet, and then add on the footwork. So teach your body and then train your muscle. I guess you're training your muscle in the first one too, but I hope you get what I'm saying. Take your time, don't rush it. I know it might be a little bit tedious at the beginning. I know it might be a little bit boring. You're not gonna have to do this all the time. Maybe at some point, like me, it's gonna become something that you'll want to do, take the time to study the motions, but it's going to make a big difference. Anyways, I hope, I hope all that makes sense. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna put down in the description box below uh, a list of half of basics that in there you can see like the command, you can see the, the whole thing with the grip. Take the time to just look at that and you study that too. But thank you for watching. I'm gonna say, please, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, hit the like button and I'll catch you in the next video.